What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a super interesting Liverpool transfer news video because the Liverpool Echo is a Liverpool based newspaper obviously and they have links to Liverpool Football Club. They are linking Liverpool with a potential transfer for Ruben Neves, the very talented 23 year old Portuguese international who is playing for Wolves and he is now an established Premier League player and the links actually come because there is Pep Yinders, Jurgen Klopp's assistant manager who has a personal connection with actually many Wolves players. We already signed uh, Diogo Jota from Wolves, uh, so we already have a link to them. We also sold them Kiana Hoover, so the two clubs are on uh, good terms. And uh, the Dutchman, Pep Jinders, Jurgen Klopp's assistant manager, labeled Jota a pressing, a pressing monster, and he was crucial in persuading Liverpool to move for Jota. So in this video, we will talk about Ruben Neves and why he might be appealing for Liverpool and what this personal connection between Yinders and Ruben Neves is. So if you enjoy these types of videos, leave a like and subscribe if you are new to my channel. Turn, turn on the bell notification. We are trying to get to 127,000 subscribers, so tell your friends about my channel. Pep Yinders worked before at Porto, where there were a couple of Wolves, current Wolves players, that Yinders was instrumental in developing. Yinders narrowly missed out on working with Joao Moutinho at FC Porto and because he moved uh, from the senior team and then he moved to AS Monaco very quickly but elite development coach Vitor Matos who arrived at Anfield last October is also a former Porto employee where he too worked with the youth players and of course current Wolves manager Nuno Espirito Santo also spent one season at Porto moving to Wolves immediately off the back of that season in 2007 17 and there are two players in particular that Liverpool have been linked with transfer moves in the past who have special connection to two current Liverpool uh, manager and coach Yinders and Matos. Ruben Neves, Liverpool have been long linked, long linked with a move uh, to the midfielder. First rumored to, the, to like Neves when uh, he was captain in Porto as an 18 year old in the Champions League and Ruben Neves is still only 23 years old. He moved to Wolves in 2017 when they were in the championship becoming the most expensive player ever to be signed by a championship club and this is what Yinder said of Ruben Neves just last year. I know him very well, I know his ambition, his passion for the game, his professionalism, I know what he gives to the team and this type of player always interests us. I recognized him when I saw him at Wolves, I saw his technique, his professionalism, I saw the 2013-14 player that I knew back then in Porto and yes Liverpool have plenty of midfielders at least when they are all fit but with Gini Vinadum increasingly likely to depart Liverpool at the end of the season the links to Ruben Neves as a potential Vinadum replacement could yet return very very soon and in fact we are we are already seeing that return and I think that we should still should assign Vinadum onto a new contract. It's much easier to give Vinadum a new contract than signing Ruben Neves for 30, 40 million. But maybe Liverpool have a lot of money to spend and maybe we are thinking about the long term options in midfield. And yes, Neves is a brilliant controller of a game, he's a brilliant technician, he has the long range shooting of uh, one of the best midfielders in terms of his long range uh, efforts, he reminds me of uh, Steven Jardine's prime, the way that Ruben Neves strikes the ball from distance and he can pass the ball and he can run and we like him as a player, I think uh, the Liverpool fans really like him but I'm not sure if he would be of course better than Vinadum because Vinadum is doing incredible work but he's soon 30 years old and maybe Liverpool don't really want to give him a new contract even though when Jurgen Klopp was asked if Vinadum will sign a new deal he said I hope so to be honest you can see that Vinadum plays all the time we have a pretty good relationship so yes I hope Vinadum signs a new contract and that's actually very strange for me that uh, the Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp wants Vinadum to extend his contract Vinadum apparently wants to extend his contract as well Liverpool are not offering Vinadum the wages that he thinks he is a contribution uh, earned or earns at Liverpool 
maybe we we value him a little bit less than Vinadum values himself I think that Liverpool should sign his sign extend his contract but and I don't think Vinadum is asking for outrageous wages maybe he's asking for wages that would make him one of the top earners at Liverpool but what's that a uh, hundred thousand pounds per week and yes I know it's it's a lot of money for a 29 year old but it it would be a much much more expensive to replace Vinadum with a brand new player who could be yes younger we have to pay 30 40 million for a player like Ruben Neves on top of Ruben Neves's wages and maybe Ruben Neves wouldn't ask for 100k weekly wages but it's a very interesting position that Liverpool have taken up with these finances and Peter Crouch said that Vinadum should be signing a new contract with Liverpool with the grass on uh, Merseyside considered to be greener than in uh, Barcelona or in Madrid he said this you look at Barcelona and Real Madrid and they are the holy grail for some teams but sometimes it doesn't work out Liverpool are a better option right now than those two clubs and Vinod when when he was asked about new contract a new contract he was quite adamant that he doesn't want to talk about it I already said it in my previous interviews I don't speak about my contract situation I speak about the games the club should speak about my contract so maybe Vinod is not really happy that he's not offered a wage that he asked for but that you know Liverpool are entitled to do that so now let's talk about Ruben Neves he's 23 years old and he's an absolutely brilliant footballer he's always scoring like five six goals but that's that's not why Liverpool would sign him he we would sign him because his passing range is absolutely exceptional and he is not an injury prone player I mean in the three seasons that he completed at Wolves he played 42 games in the first one 40 games in the second one and listen to this last season Ruben Neves played 54 games in all competitions 13 of them came in the Europa League but he also played every single game in the Premier League last season which is really really staggering and and he already has 12 appearances this season as well he played every game in the Premier League this season as well and also even though he's just 23 years old he already has 17 Portugal national team appearances and he won the UEFA Nations League with Portugal and he also was the UEFA under 21 championship uh, silver medalist so he finished as a runner-up with the Portugal under 21s in 2015 I bet you didn't know that about Ruben Neves what should Liverpool do in your opinion should we give Vinadum a new contract even if he asks for a lot of money in wages or should we just let Vinadum leave and sign Ruben Neves in the summer and yes, it would uh, cost, Ruben Neves would cost about 30, 40 million, but you also have to consider that Ruben Neves has a resale value, which is uh, almost the same as his transfer value, maybe even more. If we sign Ruben Neves for, let's say, 40 million, in five years, we could sell him for the same 40 or 50 million, or maybe even more, when Ruben Neves, uh, you know, played for Liverpool for five years so I'm not sure how Liverpool are working these finances out I'm not Liverpool's accountant obviously but I really really hope that Liverpool know what they are doing because losing Vinadum on a free contract it seems like a waste for, to me because Vinadum is I consider him one of the best midfielders right now at Liverpool and it will be very very difficult to replace him he he would be a much bigger loss than losing Emre Can on a free transfer or Adam Lallana on a free transfer because Vinadum is an ever present I can't stress this enough Vinadum started 11 games in a row for club and country and in this like worst injury crisis in the past 15 years Vinadum has been an absolute rock an absolute machine in Liverpool's midfield so I really hope that we, we keep him but it's out of my hands and we will be watching this very closely for the rest of the season how the contract talks pan out and also Mark Wakefield actually warned Liverpool not to repeat history especially Man City's history by forcing a potential superstar Harvey Elliott out of the club because remember Man City's poor judgment uh, came when they lost Jadon Sancho to Borussia Dortmund and I'm sure that Man City regret that just like Chelsea regret losing Mo Salah, Kevin De Bruyne, Romelu Lukaku some uh, players that were 
Chelsea players uh, back in the day. And this is what Wakefield said. Sancho did not see a clear pathway to the first team at Man City, which was ultimately the reason he decided to leave. This is where Liverpool will have to be careful not to make a similar mistake with Elliot. What they do have on their side, though, is that the player himself, Harvey Elliot, is a fan of Liverpool FC, so that could stand them in good stead in the future. The problem is, unless Harvey Elliot becomes a borderline world-class player in like two or three years or maybe even four years I think he has time because he's just 20, 17 so even if he's 21, 22 um, he could still be a, on a Liverpool books uh, you know he should go out on loan for a couple of seasons and I've in, it's very difficult to see where Liverpool will be in three or four years I really hope that we will be still challenging for titles and trophies but I think Harvey Elliott has the potential to become a world-class player. But that's the thing. Um, it's very, very difficult to break into this Liverpool first team. So I think that uh, Harvey Elliott should just be patient, play as much football as possible in the championship at Bla with Blackburn. I mean, only four players have more assists than Harvey Elliott in the championship. He already has two goals and four assists, which for a player who is like 17, 18 years old is absolutely terrific. The championship is a very, very hard, very brutal to league and Harry Wilson is also doing well at Cardiff City but that's the that's the problem Harry Wilson is like 23 years old so I think he will be sold in a in a few months in the summer because he just can't break into the Liverpool first team really will Harvey Elliott be good enough in three or four years to break into the first team that's the big question also uh, Jurgen Klopp actually really blasted the FA and said I'm still waiting for the first advantage of Brexit that someone can tell me what really improves after Brexit with our football structure. In football now, let's use that as an example. The, te the people want to, and I think the FA or whatever, want to make sure that the clubs don't sign too many players from other countries because they are afraid that not enough English talents will make their way. But if you look at the English youth national teams in the moment right now, they are in the top two or three, if not in the top one, in nearly all age groups. Talent-wise, 100%. And that is with the way we did it before. So Jurgen Klopp has a good point, actually. And Jurgen Klopp has been a vocal critic of Brexit, pre previously telling Guardian that the decision makes no sense at all to him. I don't want to get into a political debate because this is not the channel for that. But what I do know is that if the vote was right now, I think most people, most people or more people would vote to stay in the European Union because the whole Brexit negotiation is an absolute mess. Football will be, will suffer as well, it will be weaker because you can't sign uh, foreign players who are not uh, UK citizens when they are younger than 18 years old. So that means that young talent who are 16, 17 or 15 will go to European clubs but not to English or British clubs and that will be ultimately a disadvantage for clubs like Liverpool and other big English clubs. Uh, big talents who are like 16, 17 years old will sign for, for other foreign clubs and of course after that it will be very difficult for the English clubs to get those kind of players. And Paul Scholes gave uh, one of the best uh, like compliments to Liverpool FC and Paul Scholes is a Manchester United legend so whenever he praises Liverpool I think it's worth noting. I go back to my playing days at Man United, Scholes said, we always had four centre forwards. If two of them weren't doing it for an hour, there were always two on the bench to come on and make the difference. That's what they built here. Okay, they are playing in a different way, I know that with the three uh, attackers, but having Jota in the wings, it has to sharpen you up. Whether Jota's playing and Firmino's on the bench or whoever's on the bench, it does liven you up. You are having a little look across all the time, just keeping you on your toes. Is he going to bring me off? You have to perform to make sure he doesn't. And great credit to Liverpool. They were fantastic. They deserved it. It took a long time for Liverpool to achieve what they did last year. It was a shame for them that the fans weren't involved when they lifted the title. I'm sure there would have been week-long celebrations, parade. There would have been all sorts. It's a shame, but the fans are coming back now. I wouldn't say I hope they win it again for their fans, but I think they are well on their way 
to doing that anyway. So actually Paul Scholes is saying that Liverpool are well on their way to winning the Premier League title again and I boy am I hoping that he's right because that would be amazing to win it in such a injury hit season and Liverpool are still joint top. We are only second on goal difference and that is remarkable with the amount of injuries that Liverpool had. And now the injuries are starting to ease a little bit. Trent Roxano and Naby Keita came back against Wolves. I really hope that we can go on a winning run and Vinadum said I already said that every go goal I score this year I will dedicate to Virgil van Dijk because we all miss him it was great to have him back he said to me in the dressing room I want to see something today I want to go and so I said no problem Virg and <laughs> that was brilliant that uh, Vinadum promised basically Virgil van Dijk that he will score and he did and what a goal it was I'm still drooling over that also Vinadum said it was a really good thing that the fans were back in the stadium today it's a moment that we looked forward to for a long time so from the first moment when we heard the fans were allowed in the stadium we were already excited that we could play again with the fans it was good to have them back it was good to give them a 4-0 win and a good performance they were really supportive of us and that's also something that we need everybody knows that the fans and the crowd in Anfield is really vital for the team and can give the team an extra boost and that's what they did today. I think it was 2000 fans but the noise they made was unbelievable for 2000 people so it was a good day. And I'm loving, I love playing games Vinaldum said, I'm, I'm loving playing games for Liverpool for this team, I'm lucky and blessed that I'm fit until now so yeah I'm just enjoying the moment. It can look like I always play a lot of games, it's hard and difficult but I always try to look at the bright side of playing a lot of games because we are all footballers to play games and I just enjoy it and uh, the goalkeeper did unbelievable you see the kind of saves that he made today and also against Ajax that helped us a lot also during the game like I just said if it's 1-0 and you can see the goal then the other team will get confidence and then you have to work harder again to score another goal and he kept us in the game so yeah a really big compliment to Kelleher and and he did very very well and Jurgen Klopp also praised the fans they are a part of us it's nice that we could give them back a little look playing without fans is difficult but watching football knowing you usually would be there is difficult as well so we are absolutely in the same boat it was really nice to have that common experience tonight yes I get it 100% that it felt like it is the first time because it felt the same for us. I had no idea what to expect to be honest. Before the game I told the boys we have supporters in the stadium today. Everybody knew that but I forgot it during the week to be honest. To talk about it, what would be different and stuff like this. I don't know what would happen if it's good then to use it. If it's not good we have to ignore it. It was outstanding. Getting out of the dressing room for the warm-up that was a proper goosebump moment. It was really emotional. During the game it was emotional. It was outstanding. It was so nice to hear you will never walk alone again. How I said if nobody is injured it was a perfect night and it looks like nobody was injured so it was a perfect night and I'm really really happy now let's bring on the Michelin game we can watch that without uh, pressure and hopefully a lot of youngsters will play in that one and bring on Fulham next uh, weekend and hopefully Liverpool can get another big win under their belts thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this have a nice day see you later goodbye